In addition to the necessary expertise related to the job function, competence must include an understanding of human factor and human performance issues. And when we talk about uh, maintenance planning, we've already touched on some human factor issues. Uh, another human factor issue concerns the inspection. Who is doing the inspection? What standard are they inspecting against? How long does the inspection take? And here's an example. We've got the same zone on an aeroplane. This guy spends an hour. This guy spends an hour and a half. And this guy spends 45 minutes. Who's done the best inspection? We don't know. It's got nothing to do with time. Mm -hmm. In actual fact, it transpires that this guy has been doing it for 10 years. He's very experienced, very knowledgeable. He knows all the areas. The guy that spent an hour and a half has actually missed something. Because the guy that spent 45 minutes said to the guy that spent an hour and a half, did you check the so-and-so, so-and-so stub valve? No. Come on, I'll come and have a look with you. Right, look, there you go. Huh? I didn't see that. Human factors. So, one of the things we need to concern ourselves with is who's inspecting my aeroplane? Can you show me the competence, please, of the people who is inspecting my aeroplane? I'm paying you to inspect my aeroplane. I want to know, please, who is inspecting my aeroplane? How are you managing their competencies? What standard are they inspecting it against? And, and this is where it goes wrong. In actual fact, the guy that says to me, I'm never taking my aeroplane to that place again. That doesn't fix the problem. Think about it. He's just left the problem behind. Really? The problem is fixed when you identify the problem and address the root cause. And over the years, imagine the environment I grew up in, where we had ten aeroplanes and eight Actually, we got more aeroplanes, but we had eight aeroplanes and eight engineers that we would go down to the work face and see exactly what would happen. And we'd bring the quality manager down and say, what's going on? Uh, there is an issue that needs to be dealt with. Deal with this issue. And, and it made a difference. It's generally accepted that the most effective human factor training is training which is, takes into a full account specific organisational issues and has a direct connection with the quality and safety system of the organisation. How is this integrated into the competency programme of your organisation? Have you seen that picture before? Is it DHL? It looks like DHL. It's actually not. It's, it's, yeah. it's the colour of DHL. And it's uh, on contract to DHL, but it belongs to a company called ABX. It's a 767. It's parked at the gate in San Francisco. You can see here, there is a, a rope out the window. On the aeroplanes, they've got a rope. If you, if you need to get out quickly, you open the window, you throw out the rope, and you climb down the rope. Mm -hmm. And the guys were very happy to do that. And you can see what happened. You can see now it's all very badly burnt. Why is it burnt? Okay, the reason it's burnt is because of an electrical wire short. We've been talking about electrical wire. Mm -hmm. We've been saying that the electrical wire is the weakest part of the aircraft system. There's evidence. 2008, we're not talking about when you were children. We're talking about a few years ago. Uh, what happened? Well, there was an oxygen pipe. An electrical wire was adjacent to the oxygen pipe. It's supposed to be two centimetres away. In actual fact, it was touching. In actual fact, what happened was it vibrated. And what people don't realise, even if I have a metal tube and I attach wiring and I tie wrap it, that there is a differential movement. Why? Because 
all aeroplanes vibrate. They vibrate at a frequency dependent on the composition of the material. So metal vibrates at a different frequency than wire. And of course, they vibrate at frequencies and harmonics. So even though these guys are, are tied together, if we were to magnify it, it's like this. How long does it take? I told you earlier. About 12 years, or 40,000 hours. It can happen sooner. That modification was done on six aeroplanes. They were converted from passenger aeroplanes to cargo aeroplanes. Um, that was part of the modification. It was done incorrectly. And it wasn't noticed. But subsequently in service, it was inspected multiple times, but it wasn't noticed. Why? Because of the competency of the inspectors. People are looking, but not knowing what they're looking at. They're not seeing danger when wire is adjacent to oxygen pipe. So who's inspecting it? I'm inspecting it. What are you inspecting it against? Huh? And this is the problem. Could this happen again? It could happen again. Of course. This is the reality that we face. And again, it comes down to competency, the management of competencies, uh, and so on and so on. Incredibly expensive. When they inspected the rest of the airplanes, they found that they were also not correct. That's not the end of it. There's other elements and other dimensions to this story, uh, and so on and so on. But the, the, the message is that often, when there is a defect, it's there for us to see if we have the right eyes to see it. If we know what we're looking at. As I said, the guys I showed around an engine on the Falcon and said, look at this, look at this, look at this. And he went, oh, oh yes. And they felt guilty because they were inspecting the engine and suddenly they see seven defects. And I said, well, okay, you don't have to worry because it's not dangerous because of the amount of hours that this aeroplane is doing. But if it was a commercial aircraft, it would be a different story. Because each one of these eventually can become a problem. 